welcome to yet another edition of Bits to Billions. Now, it's rare to find a unicorn in the manufacturing space in India that has ambitions of making an India for the world. But that's the difference here with Zwork. We have the co-founder and CEO Amrit Acharya who wants to bring together OEMs and EPC firms with small and medium enterprises uh, and really help manufacture components for a wide array of industries. Amrit, welcome to the show. Um, what do we have right here? Which industry does this go in? Do these components go into? Yeah, so these these specific products are called jaws and fixtures. They are used for holding machine components together. This is primarily for uh, automobile industry, aerospace industry, and the space industry. Uh, some more broadly, some of the things we make in this factory ultimately go into the fuselage of an aircraft, or they go into the fuel injection systems of various uh, kind of automobile components. Right. Um, is it exciting to you know train for engineering and actually do engineering because we see so many people doing civil and mechanical and aerospace and yeah. you know ultimately crossing over to software and internet i mean i was part of that uh, trend like i graduated with uh, degree in electrical engineering but i ended up doing nothing close to electrical engineering for for many years in fact i was at mckinsey for a bit but uh, at my heart i always felt that calling that you know i i uh, really like building things uh, using my bare hands sometimes, and and uh, we wanted when we when I came back from the U.S. to India, uh, building a company which held true to those roots in my case was very important for me. Um, what I also wanted to ask you, Amrit, is if I look at your own tra trajectory, right? As you said, you did electrical engineering. You have roots in Odisha. Yes. Then you went to IIT Madras. You worked at ITC. Then you know you went, you did your masters abroad. You worked at McKinsey, and then you decide to come back in India in an industry which is all about forging and casting and machining and fabrication. Um, you can call it, you know, unsexy yeah. at a time when <laughs> we've seen so many people do internet startups. Yes. So why did you decide to choose um, an unsexy industry, so to speak? You know, yeah. the low, the road less traveled. In my, my first job at ITC was to build a new factory for them. In fact, when I joined, uh, they had just bought the land and over the next two years, built a lot of the buildings, bought a lot of the machines, hired a lot of people. And I really fell in love with manufacturing back then. Uh, I did that for two years and then, you know, I took a detour after that. But when I was looking to come back to the, from, from the US to India, I looked back at what I had done before. Hmm. And, and uh, my co-founder, Srinath, his family business was also into manufacturing. His father ran a small manufacturing unit, not that different from this one where we are here today. Uh, so while it was unsexy, for us it was very sexy. Because, <laughs> because we, we understood the pain points in a way which it felt unique to us. Hmm. Uh, it felt very authentic to us that these are the problems we are passionate about. Uh, I certainly had felt that between the time I was doing this work at ITC to today, nothing much had changed in this industry. And I felt that I wanted to drive some change there. Right. Amrit, uh, the name Zwork means strong foundation. How did you come up with it? Yeah, so when we're looking for a name, if you look at the history of the manufacturing industry, a uh, lot of the companies are good companies, are European or American companies. Even l &T was started by two Danish engineers, Larsen and Tubro. Uh, of course, it was a strong foundational Indian company. So we wanted a name which was European to sound, to signify excellence. To signify uh, quality. To signify quality. And, and Zetwork actually means strong foundations in, in Dutch. It also rhymes with network. So it was a, <laughs> it was a great combination of all, of all factors. Right. And you know, today, if I look at your client roster, right, it has the who's who uh, from the world of manufacturing, EPC, from l &T to BHEL to GE uh, to even Flipkart. How tough was it to go to these giants and convince them that, you know, we are a three-year-old startup, two-year-old startup, and we will make these things for you? Yeah. So these things take time. You know, while, mm. while we see the ultimate output of the, all the hard work that goes into the company building process, the reality is these are never overnight successes. You know, there's a quote I like, it takes 15 years to become an overnight success. And in some case, that's very true for us. Like, a lot of these companies, we have taken our time to I feel confident that we can service these customers over a period of time and vice versa from their, from their side to us. Like hmm. a lot of the questions we get initially are, hey, where is your factory? 
<laughs> and we, then we have to explain people the model. Like, look, this is a different way of getting your products manufactured. Ultimately, what do you care about? You care about quality, you care about timelines, you care about price. We will meet all of those three requirements, but the way we do it is slightly different from what you may have experienced before. Now, that, that journey, that's a journey. Some companies understand that, and those are your early adopters. And some companies take a, lot, a little bit more time. But what we have been able to demonstrate time and again is that the model works. Uh, that, uh, you know, in fact, we are sometimes better than their existing alternatives because we diversify the risk of manufacturing across many, supply, many suppliers. A single order at Zetwork does not go to a single supplier. It goes to five, ten suppliers. And so we are often 10x faster than what they would have experienced by themselves. Hmm. So it starts small. Every customer gives us a small order only at the beginning. But what we see is uh, over a period of time, they 10x their business volumes with hmm. us hmm. Hmm. over a year. Right. Amrit, we are also talking at a point um, where, you know, if you look at the macro, people are talking about fears of a recession in the US. Uh, even in India, there is worry of inflation, the impact, the knock-on effects that it has. Startups, uh, you know, you live uh, in the startup hub, so I'm sure you're hearing a lot about layoffs and funding winter. Where does Zetwork really stand here? Because in a sense, your fortunes are tied to, you know, the macroeconomic scenario, the macro environment. So how are you kind of navigating this tough phase? Yeah, I mean, so a couple of things. One is, uh, you know, we turned profitable as a business last year. Uh, we have not announced these results publicly yet, but they'll be public soon. Uh, and we did it, it was not the flavor of the season, to your point. You know, there was a lot of emphasis on growth. Uh, while we also grew a lot last year, we grew profitably. Hmm. And, and hence, uh, uh, in some way, our destiny is under our control, uh, because we can choose to go aggressive or not. And we don't have to rely on some of these extreme measures that you talked about, uh, because in some way our destiny is under our control. Hmm. Uh, that being said, we have done a few other things. Our business is very diversified. One is across very all these industries. We serve oil and gas. We serve aerospace. We serve auto. We serve infrastructure. We serve consumer electronics. While there is recession, there there is no recession which is universal across all sectors. Hmm. There is cyclicalities within sectors. So some go up, some go down. So some will hedge you if the yeah, others... Yeah, we have a lot of natural hedge. Hmm. Secondly, almost 25% of our business comes from the US and uh, but Europe. But isn't that going to be a worry? Because everybody is talking about how US itself will slip into a recession. Yeah. Now we are certainly seeing that to some hmm. extent. Like some of our US customers, uh, the pace at which they were uh, doing business with us, there is a difference between this year and last year. Uh, that being said, we are also big in India. Uh, so, what I mean is there are hedges, hmm. there are pockets, times when US will be very strong, which is what we saw last year. This year US may be a little bit soft, but that's when our India business kind of takes over. Uh, we are also diversifying into Middle East, we're diversifying into Europe. Yeah. So, the idea is that, look, these are very hard things to predict. Uh, you know, which, which, which industry will do well at any point in time, which country will do well at any point in time. Our idea is to build a resilient business, hmm. uh, where each of these things by themselves don't significantly affect the... But will you also have to lay off or are you hiring no. or are you... We are, we, are business as, we are business as usual. There is business no, as usual. No, no change mm. in how we are operating. And you're capitalized as well because you raised a... We, we have, uh, you know, we have raised close to 500 million dollars over the last four years and most of it is in the bank and we are profitable so we have... We're in right. a good place. Uh, Amrit, I also wanted to get your thoughts on, you know, what, what is it about the air at IIT Madras <laughs> that it seems to produce a lot of these uh, interesting deep tech startups. Yeah. Of course, you have Zetwork, then you have Sridhar Bimbo of Zoho who also wants to reimagine R&D and manufacturing in India. Then you have very interesting space tech startups like, you know, Agni Cool Cosmos and Galaxy Eye. You have Aether also. Yeah, yeah. So, so what is it about IIT Madras that seems to produce so IIT more Madras, of these deep tech startups? Uh, IIT Madras historically, at least to my knowledge, has had a very strong uh, technical orientation. Uh, so a lot of the people we looked up to were people who used to go for doing their PhDs in Stanford or Berkeley or some of these places. And, uh, and they were doing PhD in very technical fields. Uh, so in some way, we are emulating them in a more business context. We are solving really technical problems that way. Uh, IIT Madras also some, did something really well 
10 years back when I was still in college, they introduced this thing called Center for Innovation, yeah. which was for specifically for hardware com uh, kind of oriented companies. And, and today there's a thriving ecosystem of, uh, uh, I know people who are designing wheelchairs, people who are designing uh, EVs, people who are designing, some of the professors have become entrepreneurs. And, 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 in, and a professor becoming an entrepreneur will not start a food delivery company. <laughs> they will start something which is in their specialization. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's part of the culture at IIT Madras. Yeah. How were you in college? You used to take part in this sarang and shastra, <laughs> or were you? Like yeah, I was uh, in sarang. We had this thing called core group, which was designing the festival. I was uh, in charge of getting money for them. So in some way, so nothing has changed. Fundraising, lessons. fundraising. In some way, I learned at at sarang. At Shastra, we had these lot of programs, uh, one of these things called Junkyard Wars, yeah. which is uh, basically we went to a workshop and built a vehicle from scratch. Uh, we won second prize there when I was in my second year and through that I got an internship at Bosch. So I've been very uh, hands-on, technical, uh, quote-unquote, in, in my entire journey that way. Founded in 2018 by Amit Acharya, Srinath Ramakrishnan, Rahul Sharma and Vishal Chaudhary, Zetwork is a manufacturing platform connecting original equipment manufacturers and engineering procurement construction customers across India, North America and Southeast Asia with small and medium-sized enterprises. It is present in categories such as fabrication, machining, casting and forging. It helps customers in procuring custom products which are not available off the shelf real-time tracking and project management all the way till delivery. It has over 100 clients in North America, ranging from small enterprises to large conglomerates. It makes nail clippers for one company, for instance, seen as a niche market, but used widely at the same time. Most of its founders have a background at the IITs or ITC. It recently elevated Ankit Fatehpuria as its fifth co-founder. Vishal Rahul Ankit, thank you very much for joining us on uh, Bits to Billions. So, you know, very interesting composition of uh, founders. Uh, you all either have an I IIT connection or an ITC connection. So, tell us a little about that. How did that come about? And ITC especially seems to be very, uh, uh, seems to have a very strong bond with Zetwork. Yeah, so, I mean, we, after IIT, we went to ITC. That was our first job as management trainees. Coincidentally, between me, Srinath and Amrit, we had the same boss and we had the same location, Guntur. Was the boss so bad that all of you had to meet <laughs> <laughs> No, actually, he, he also happens to be an angel investor in our company, okay. so we bonded very well with him and uh, financial independence, first job, three of us would go to bar together, would talk about love life together, so that's how we became very close. Eventually, we parted ways, uh, people went on their different directions, but when we thought of starting something, this gang was the first group we'd reach out to. And you to also have an ITC. Yeah, so I didn't work with them. What happened when they moved out of ITC, then I moved to a new office where my boss was the same Vishal is talking about. Okay, this and boss seems to be the glue. That yeah, and that on. boss referred Ankit. Yes. Please okay. take him. Yes, yes. But Ankit, do you feel a little left out? I mean, there are like two IIT Madras and you know one IIT Kharagpur and uh, absolutely Ruth. not I am uh. super comfortable <laughs> if there was one more chartered accountant in the gang then probably I would have felt a little uncomfortable <laughs> but it's like one now he kind of can reign supreme as the <laughs> sole chartered accountant of course of course I was the one who wasn't part of the ITC gang right uh, I end up working with Srinath at Blackburg and that's how the connection came into existence. So I'm the only one who is not from an ITC, I'm from Blackburg. So there's an IIT, ITC and a Blackburg yeah, exactly, mafia. Exactly, actor, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So the cliche goes that, you know, two's company, three's crowd. Here you have five co-founders. Srinath is not here. But um, how does the dynamic work? Does it, is it like too many co-founders in one go? Or is it just, you know, you guys doing your separate thing? Yeah, so I think we are very clearly defined uh, as we have evolved uh, hmm. over the last three, three and a half years on what mandate each of us run in the, in the company. So I run the whole industrial uh, mandate, Rahul runs the consumer mandate hmm. and uh, Ankit runs the whole upstream uh, mandate for the company. So that way our boundaries are very clearly defined, hmm. the asks are very clearly defined and uh, but at the same time it always helps to 
dig each other's head to take inputs on what is it that if I need help on something, I would go to Rahul or an Ankit. Hmm. But uh, the boundaries of work are, are fairly clearly defined. So that way it has, it has worked for us so far. And to, and to add to that, right, uh, of course in the initial days, you would find it difficult because you are new folks who have come in again to work together. But we decided in the very first go that when we take a decision, the decision has to be about the company. Hmm. We put the company first above all of us. Hmm. So in that way, you, whenever you call out that, hey, are you putting the company first, the decision making becomes easier. Hmm. And that's the alignment that has been working for all of us. So who has the final veto or the vote among the five? We don't have that culture of final veto or vote. It's hmm. always comes as a group consensus. Yeah, we, we try to convince each other on certain things. And if, for example, if I raise out few risk hmm. or if I raise out few doubts, everyone tries to convince and then take a call for the company. Right? Hmm. If it's in the end making sense for the company, why not? Right? How can it happen that I might feel it's not working for the company and someone else might feel it works? Right? I leave both have to align. So the culture is to align and drive it together rather than to take unilateral decisions. Yeah, I don't remember any event where we had to put something to vote. Okay. We have a culture of disagree and commit, but uh, rarely it happens. When we walk out of the room, we agree and work out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You also straddle, um, you know, a very different world because you have part of the old economy with you. That's the segment you service. But you're also trying to marry that with the software solutions you have for tracking and, and, and so on and, you know, matching requirements. So how does this reflect in the kind of hiring that you do? Because you will need specialists in industries like, say, oil and gas or consumer or capital goods. But you would also need technologists who are, you know, marrying all this at the back end. So in terms of integration of workforce, has that been an issue where, you know, the two twins kind of don't meet? Yeah, so I think we have very distinct people, you know, <laughs> one and like you said, software engineers uh, who were uh, coding for a very different kind of a company before and now they're working with us and in the other hand, you know, hardcore technocrats to build refineries or some of that stuff. But uh, I think as founders, what we have been able to drive is the marrying of these two very independent world and both see a lot of value. Because see, historically, industrial as a segment has never got a lot of love from the technology side. Right? There's yeah. still, there are not many softwares, there are not many tools to ease their, the way they do their jobs. And our product managers, our technology team appreciate that a lot and they see a lot of value. This is an entirely, a lot of people today are doing, you know, payment solutions and a lot of people are doing e-commerce solutions. So this is a very new, exciting area for them and a totally untouched world. Hmm. So. Uh, we keep driving that alignment, exciting people about uh, the software folks. And even the, the technocrats in our company who come from the engineering background, for them also this is a very different world, you know, mm -hmm. online tracking, they've never seen something like this before. And, and that's exactly where they're able to give the very right kind of inputs because they have the details, the nuts and bolts of how it should actually be done. They understand it better than any of us. So, so I think so far we have been able to marry the two worlds very well by driving a, driving a very strong alignment between them. Yeah, you want to add something? I think Shal is absolutely right on that aspect. Uh, it has, it was in initial days we also figured out that we'll require both the worlds to exist together. Yeah. Right. We thought we'll just do it ourselves. Then there's a lot of things that we don't know, and hence the folks from the industry give that, that knowledge. But at the same time, they are so excited to see something happen because they always imagine that why can't we do this, right? For example, they're also consumers at one end. Yeah. They're ordering on Swiggy. And when they order on Swiggy, they also realize that why can't we do a lot of things that Swiggy can do by giving us on our phone, we can do the work as well on our phone. And that opportunity they never got. So they know that they require that particular uh, site, which is missing, which is the technology part. And the technology folks always are excited about manufacturing. So they also get to know about how manufacturing happens and, and the culture of the organization helps drive this energy between the two of them. Right. Another uh, aspect I would like to add is, you know, in a lot of these industrial full stack conventional companies like l &T, Tata and all, uh, you know, the, the, the freshers or the mid-level managers, when they come from their college, want to implement some sort of a technology, want to change the way of working, they don't get that liberty. Mm -hmm. Because these companies run with their own long SOPs. But over here, that flexibility and our mindset is technology, you know. So even the guys who join us in the ops role, uh, they get that liberty to, you know, kind of do the same thing in a different way. Mm -hmm. Marry technology and business together. 
when I look at Zetwork, apart from you know the lines of business you have today, the obvious derivative use cases would also be around uh, logistics or you know procurement materials. Yeah. Is it something that you're already doing in a big way? Something that you will perhaps double down on going forward? We are doing bits and pieces of it. So hmm. if you look at uh, our business in from a supplier lens, hmm. our, uh, if you look at the SME as the heart of our business. In some way, we are giving new new orders to that uh, small manufacturer. Yeah. And uh, and but that's not what that's not the only thing that they, they need. Once they get an order, we feel that the ecosystem to execute that order is broken in our country. It, whether it's logistics, whether it's procurement, whether it's working capital, there's a host of services which a typical small manufacturer needs, which are missing in the country today. Um, and and uh, over a period of time, we have started to think about our business that way. Hmm. Like we. Of course, we start by increasing the revenue of that entity. You know, hmm. if they were doing one crore of business last year, why is that work? They say they, they'll do one and a half crores, two crores. But over and above, how can we help them execute that better? Uh, so while we are not doing logistics yet, uh, but we have started experiments with working capital, uh, with procurement, etc. And, hmm. and increasingly, this, they will be a part of our uh, strategy moving forward. The idea is to build an operating system for manufacturing. So credit, uh, B2B? B, yeah, credit, uh, helping them buy raw materials better at a, at, a, at a faster speed. See, what one thing we realized when we were looking at our data, you know, when you give an order to a SME to make a product from start to finish, there are, let's say, 10 steps in that journey from, uh, from step one to step 10. 80% of the delays happened in step one itself, which is buying the raw material. Mm. People were taking long time to buy that raw material. And, and why was that? For various reasons. That their cash was stuck, they were waiting to get the best rates, etc. And that's when we realized that to solve for our customer experience, because our customers value on-time delivery, mm. they value quality. Ultimately, if we, the, the, the things are breaking at the last mile. And if we really want to make a dent, we actually have to solve this problem at some point in our time. We can do it through partnerships. We don't have to do everything ourselves. In terms of policy, what do you think needs to be done better for manufacturing companies like yours um, in terms of improving the ease of doing business? Sure. No, I feel like fundamentally there's been, uh, I mean, we have seen the business from last three, four years yeah. only, so we didn't know what existed before. Hmm. But uh, certainly things like GST, things like uh, PLI, which hmm. is an incentive scheme by the government to encourage yeah. production yeah. of, of uh, various items in India. These are certainly real, real impact that we are seeing. Like I'll give a simple example. With GST, what has happened? Prior to GST, uh, the country was very localized. Like mm. if you were a manufacturer based in southern India, your market was limited to south southern Correct. India because it was very difficult with excise mm. and that. But today the country has opened up. So your, your market there's has become one yeah, there's one tax. one tax, and because of that, the market has opened up in a big way. And we are seeing supply chains being reconstructed as we speak. And definitely, we find ourselves at the right place at the right time. Uh, mm. You know, some of this we did not anticipate, but it has been a big game changer, at least as far as manufacturing is concerned. Uh, and secondly, you know, there are things like um, if an, if you are creating a new manufacturing entity, there are a lot of tax rebates. The the taxation that you are subject to is lower than uh, than a to normal normal new corporate. Mm. And things like PLI, which encourage production, yeah, uh, and production can be both for domestic and for exports. The only thing is we have to be a little patient. These mm. things don't happen overnight. Like even GST, it's a four year, five year process. We are starting to see the impact of these things today. Uh, every month we are setting, re the government is setting records in terms of in GST terms collect of collections. collections. Yeah. But these things take time. Mm. Uh, certainly the intent is very strong. That's mm. what I can say. But any challenges that you see that you know can be done better in terms of the ease of doing business as someone who's in the manufacturing space today? Nothing in particular that mm. stands out. I think. Uh, you know, there are there is of course a process for everything and those mm. processes have been set for various reasons historically right. reasons so it's not up to us to question those i think uh, i think the more more importantly than looking back it's important to look forward and, and I think be long term a, impatient yeah. uh, sorry long term patient uh, as you said but um, if i look at the first what four it's just four been four years since you started you've already had a pivot and now you're you're kind of confident about the space that you're operating in what are the next four years or next 10 years going to look like for you in terms of where you want to be 
Yeah, I like to answer this question in a more macro way. Like, if you look at uh, various indices for India, hmm. uh, if you take steel consumption, hmm. it's a very esoteric metric, but the per capita consumption of steel in India is around 70 kgs per person. To put this into context, I'm not sure how many yeah. people will know the statistic. <laughs> to put hmm. that into context, the world average is 200, 250, and China is close to 400. Uh, which means that at least in our lifetime, if hmm. we believe that India will be a 5 trillion, 10 trillion economy, all of these things will grow. Like what we are building is the pipeline of the economy in some way. Hmm. Uh, all of the you know consumer businesses, all of the other like let's call them um, you know front end businesses depend on us in some way to succeed, hmm. to create that strong back end that uh, a country which is a five trillion economy deserves. So that is our goal. Like uh, you know, as the country grows, uh, that work will, will also grow at some, at some point. Any entrepreneur who's really inspired you in the way you want to build Zetwork or the way you have built Zetwork so far? Yeah, we really look up to, you know, I think companies which which have built strong teams. Hmm. Um, like? Like, uh, I, think the, I think the Misho guys have done really well. Oyo, uh, for a long period of time, you know, they have challenges in their business, but I think they have built a very strong team, very strong culture. So these are companies to look up to. Right. On that note, thank you very much <laughs> for talking to us on this topic. Yeah. Thank you for thank you. Thank you for talking.